Welcome to Tank Radio, and today we're talking about satellites or contacting a satellite. Play that awesome intro video. Frank. 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 Hey, Frank. T.O., how did you get into my computer? Hey, hey, that intro thing. It, it needs some work, man. Yeah, I know. I'm working on it. Look at this. This is how you intro. Now that's an intro. Chop, chop, son. How am I supposed to compete with that? How long have you been on YouTube? I've only been on there for about a month or two. And I just now started on my intro. It just feels like I have enough material now. And I... Here I'm demonstrating the most important thing to have when doing satellite communication. Have a good chair. Now let's look at the Android application I'm using. The first application I'm going to show you is called Look for Sats. This application shows you when you select the satellite when that satellite is going to pass. It's going to help you plan on when the satellite is going to be over um, head for you to keep keep track. It will also give you the uh, path it's going to take across the sky um, where it's currently positioned in the sky from the north. I don't use this application for the sky tracking mostly I use it for the passes and to plan when I'm going to go see a um, or get set up for a satellite. I use this for planning. This is also good for you to um, it has all the satellites here if you have a particular one, most notably AO 91 and 92 I've heard in the sky, you tell it what satellites you want to track and then um, you go to passes and it will tell you where those ones the next passes will come up and it will give you a countdown of um, when that pass is going to happen. The next app I use is called Heavens Above. Heavens Above has a section for radio satellites, and this will give you the frequencies of um, the satellite if it's on an amateur radio band. The one drawback about Heavens Above is, in the info section, sometimes it's kind of blank, and it's hard to see what it's actually doing. It has two download, download frequencies. so. It's probably just transmitting back telemetry on the amateur radio bands. I like Heavens Above because it will give you the tracks also overhead, but if you turn it and point it towards the sky, it will also give you where in the sky it is. So, I don't think that's going to be good on camera, but I'm recording the screen. So that's very helpful for tracking it as it goes over the sky. The other site I use is on the computer now, and it is AMSAT. On AMSAT under satellite, you can also look up the schedules here, upcoming satellites. I mostly use it for, where's the option, current status. And then these will show you what other amateur operators have reported for that satellite status and to see if it's a good satellite to use. I heard 91 the other day. There it is. Two people heard it. And it will give you color codes. The color codes are explained up here. Transpotter, um, repeater active is blue. So those are the um, applications I use. and. The website to track to see if that is a actually good satellite that other amateur operators have utilized. Just checking in on Frank here and it seems that he is still working on programming his radio. Let's take a look on how he's doing that. Alright, before we get into programming the radio we must understand first the Doppler effect and the cool physics behind it. But Frank! How many times it took you to pass your physics class? It doesn't matter. It matters about the science. And eventually I did pass it. C's get degrees, right? The best example I can think of 
for the Doppler effects is imagine you're on a train platform and a train's coming. It's just going to zoom through the platform. Yay, a train. As the train's getting closer and closer to you, you hear it and you notice that it sounds a much higher pitch as it's coming towards you. But then as it passes you, you hear it at a much lower pitch, but it takes longer for that train sound to dissipate or for it to disappear in the distance. And that is the Doppler effect. Say the train is stationary and it's a single sound wave. That sound wave may look like this. If you were stationary relative to the train and the train was moving towards you, that sound wave is actually getting shorter on itself, getting compressed on itself, and that wave is drawn like that. And it's, it has a much more values and peaks than the standing wave does. Frequency is higher, or if you're talking about pitches, it's a higher pitch. Then if the train's moving away from you, that sound wave is getting stretched out, giving you a lower pitch. And it also changes the frequency of that uh, sound wave. And the same thing is happening talking about satellites. As the satellite is moving over the horizon, it's getting closer to you, but it's doing that very, very, very fast. And that sound wave um, or the signal that the satellite's transmitting to you is getting compressed and we're going to have to compensate for that. Same thing as the satellite is moving away from you, it's over the apex or the closest point to you and the satellite. As that satellite moves away, that sound wave is getting stretched out and we have to compensate for that so we can hear the satellite again and talk to it too. See the outbound frequency for the satellite is 436.785 and the inbound frequency is 145.686 so this is us yay with our Yagi antenna trying to talk to the satellite and the satellite is here in the sky and its path over us will look like this. To compensate for the Doppler effect as we are listening for the satellite is we're going to have to shift our outbound frequency up. So as the satellite is coming towards us, we're going to need to shift the frequency up. And I do in steps of 5 kilohertz. So as the satellite crests the horizon and we're just first starting to hear it, we're going to need to step up twice. So our first frequency we're going to sit on is going to be 436795. But then as the satellite gets to the quarter of the sky or about five minutes from where I really kind of first heard it on this frequency, um, you're going to need to shift down to 436790. Then as it gets closer to the apex or the shortest distance between you and the satellite, you're going to sit right on its transmit frequency and shift one more time, 85. But then as the satellite starts to move away from you, about a quarter in the sky, again you're going to shift down, 80. And finally when it's just way over here you're gonna to have to shift one more time 75 and that's as the only the uh, that's for the outbound or for you to hear the satellite for you to transmit to the satellite we're gonna to have to do the same thing but in reverse because as the satellite is coming towards us because it's coming towards us, we're going to need to transmit at a lower frequency. So as it's receiving our signal, it is actually changing the frequency or pitch of that signal higher. So we're going to have to start at a lower frequency. So 145. 145, and we're going to shift down twice. So it will be 850. Then as it gets to about quarter of the sky again, I'm going to shift up 145. 
855 or 855 sorry then as it gets to the top of the uh, this apex tool with respect to us we're going to sit right on its trans or its inbound frequency of 860 but then as the satellite starts to leave us we're going to have to transmit at a higher frequency so as our um, the set our transmit wave hits the antenna receiver and it's moving away that we have the Doppler shift uh, effect will be compensated for so we're going to have to step up one step of 65 then as it gets further away from us one last time we're going to have to step at 270 and that is the Doppler effect and that's how you compensate for it so let's talk about the radio okay so let's look at programming the radio the first thing I like to start out with um, to turn off the squelch you want to hear the background noise and that will help you be able to pick out the satellite the second menu option is um, actually it's very convenient this bow thing um, menu option one is the step and again I'm stepping uh, with 5 kilohertz so I put that as 5 kilohertz the other thing you want to make sure you have turned off is all the repeater options in the Balfe. That's so that you don't frequency shift to talk on a repeater and um, not transmit simplex to actually communicate to the satellite. So this particular satellite, I believe it's SO50, SO50. Um, the downlink frequency is 436795 and then the uplink frequency is one four five eight five zero let's go back to look for sat this is showing us the path of the satellite um, it's going to take across our sky here in the other applications heavens above it will also have what direction the um, pass is going to happen from but just for our argument sakes here we're going to say it's going from the north or northeast to the southwest so as the satellite starts to come into the sky, so we're going to start out our radio with um, the download frequency two steps above. So we're going to step it up 10 kilohertz. So one, two, and then the uplink frequency, we're going to step down 10 kilohertz, one and two. As the satellite starts to come over the horizon and gets closer and closer to us, about that quarter point around here, I'll go ahead and shift our downlink frequency down once, and then our um, uplink frequency, I'll shift it up once. Then as the satellite starts to getting closer and closer to me again, or you might start hearing if you do hear it some hiss or background noise, it's a sign that you need to go ahead and shift again. So we're going to shift the download link once and then shift the up link once. And now we're sitting right on the both frequencies because the satellite's going to be coming overhead. And that means the Doppler effect is going to be very minimalized. Then as it starts leaving us, um, we're going to start shifting again. We're going to shift the down link once, going down and the uplink going up this time because it's getting away from us and then as the satellite starts to get um, closer to the horizon again we'll go ahead and shift it one last time the downlink frequency down once and then we're going to shift the uplink frequency up once and then this should give us an offset of 10 kilohertz on both of these frequencies and that's how you Doppler shift on a Balfang manually. So that's some basic concepts of uh, working satellites. The next couple of videos I'll be posting is uh, me trying to put those concepts to practice and see if I can get a satellite. I hope you stick around. And all the single ladies. <laughs> now you got that song stuck in your head. Yes, I do.